Okay, we're here. Okay, so today we are in uh, first, I mean, second John. Uh, how much, uh, how, how, have you ever read second John and third John? Uh, we always read John, the gospel, John, first John, very, a lot of time we read it. Uh, we start <laughs> read second John, third John, because there's no chapter two in all these two books, uh, only one chapter. That's all, a uh, very, very short book. Uh, so since we cover first John, we want to cover second John, third John. Let's uh, pray. Let's pray. Dear Lord, as we open the word of God, give us a teachable heart, uh, take away any hindrance so that we can understand your word and give us co conviction and touch our hearts so that we decide to obey what you have taught us in the Bible and bless uh, all my brother and sister as we uh, haven't seen each other for a long time. Uh, I pray for them, pray that you protect them, be with them and help us not to stop worshiping you uh, by ourselves and collectively. And that's because you promised you will be there when we uh, worship together so bless your children today. Commit this hour in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. All right. So uh, not uh, very long. It's only the 12, 13, 13 verse, uh, 12. Yeah, 13 verses. Okay. Um, <clears throat> why don't we read the uh, one to six first? The elder, that's John, to the lady chosen by God, to her children, whom I love in the truth, and not I only, but also all who know the truth, because of the truth who lives in us and will be with us forever. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father, and from Jesus Christ, the Father's Son, will be with us in truth and love. It has given me great joy to find some of your children walking in the truth, just as the Father commanded us. And now, dear lady, I'm not writing you a new command, but one we have had from the beginning. I ask that you, we love one another, and this is love, that we walk in obedience to his commands. As we have learned, as we've heard from the beginning, his command is that you walk in love. This section, uh, well, first the author is John uh, and lady chosen by God, very, very uh, likely is talking about a church. We are chosen, we call out from, uh, from those who have believed. We are chosen, we are called, ele uh, chosen by God. Uh, the Bible also said, the bride, the church is the bride of Christ. One day he'll return to receive us. So, um, so this, the John's writing to us, to the church. By God, uh, to the children as we are and how we love in the truth. Uh, that's one thing that's very obvious and in this section is the the word truth and love repeat many times. Grace, mercy, and love, peace from God the Father and from Jesus Christ the Father's Son will be with us in truth and love. And then he uh, said, it's great joy to find them walking the truth and also command us to love each other. So the theme is to love and to remain the truth as the Two things, main thing in this section. So the church has love from God. 
the church's truth from God. So you cannot compromise one thing and then neglect the other. You cannot say, oh, we just want to be buddy buddies. Doesn't matter how you teach, doesn't matter what you think about Jesus, doesn't matter how you live, oh, we just love each other. Acceptance, right? Acceptance, tolerance, uh, that's uh, unbalanced. Uh, the church has truth from God, the, so we have to defend, we have to protect this, this truth. And uh, also we have to love. We On the, the other extreme, uh, we just said, oh, the Bible said this is sin, so you sin, so I just uh, curse you, hate you, uh, you know, go go the other route. So very extreme. Yes, you have truth, but does have an ounce of love? That's not. Uh, I mean, may God give us wisdom when we're dealing with uh, this balance of the, holding on to the truth and also speak the truth in love, Ephesians said, right? Speak the truth in love. Uh, but that that's a exception. When people uh, harming us, uh, harming the church in a malicious way, uh, like, like enemies of God, we have to be careful and protect ourselves from all this attack and uh, uh, twisting the truth about Jesus and the salvation plan. They preach another gospel, then we have to defend them and challenge them and separate ourselves from this group of people. So that the in all in generally, generally, uh, we everything we say, everything we do, remember we got to be speaking in truth. What we say should be truthful. And other thing is we got to have God's love to particularly with brothers and sisters and also to non-Christian too. That's our witness of our, because of our good behavior, they give glory to the father. That's Jesus teaching. Let your light shine in this world, shine in this world. We are not monk. We are not hiding ourselves in the mountain. Uh, we are living in this world you go to work you face all, a lot of non-believers uh, we, we drive in the freeway there non-christian there and jesus sending you, you and me out to shine to proclaim the truth but also demonstrate god's love particularly the truth uh he addressing here is the, the truth about jesus and his salvation plan that's the core of our faith as a center, how can one be safe for a, a non-Christian? Uh, if we not clear about this, that we're in big trouble. The church lost its identity, lost the content of the gospel, and lost the mission God sent to us. Jesus came, and that there's a set of teaching that he gave. He revealed himself. If people trusted it, uh, lied about it, uh, we, we, if we don't defend our faith, then we're in trouble. The church will stop existing. Imagine if a cult, uh, a wrong teaching is uh, permeating the church today and no one corrects it. Um, people just remain silent. And then 10 years later, and slowly become acceptable. And 20 years later, it's become the norm. Um, and one generation later, it become a practice. Uh, look at the Roman Catholic Church in the Europe, in the dark period of a lot of false tradition, uh, wrong teaching. No one corrects it because everyone's blind. So keep accumulating all this thing and call it true. And people just believe, start to believe it. And then become a can of worm. <laughs> and after 200 years, everyone is confused. Everyone is lost. No one sees the truth. And it is our Christian responsibility 
to hold up the truth of God is revealed in the Bible. If anyone is teaching something against the crystal, the, the pers- uh, about Jesus, his incarnation, his deity, uh, his sufficiency in our salvation, uh, or salvation by faith uh, in Christ, not by our good work, all this truth, uh, we need to hold on tight to it. So John particularly talk about incarnation. People disbelieve that. They say, oh, there's no such thing. Man, God become a man. The word become flesh, dwell among us. There's no such thing. This is guy just delusional. Um, God cannot become a man. All this uh, doubt about Jesus, be- word become flesh, primarily, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, all defending this specifically this piece of truth. Jesus is, was a man born in by Mary through the Holy Spirit and grew up to be a, uh, our savior, uh, died for us on our behalf as a human on the cross to cover our sin. But he was resurrected by the Father and the Holy Spirit. And now those who trust him has eternal life. Uh, anyone trusted this core thinking, a a belief of the gospel, John asking us to be careful uh, or even stand up to to defend. Uh, 2,000 years ago, we have all this uh, false teaching in the early church. This is the early church. If they don't defend it, if they don't correct it, imagine (laughs) what happened. We may not exist today. (laughs) No more gospel. It's all, all, all cults and all uh, false teachers. Um, you know, you, we, we, uh, we went to Japan sometimes, uh, you know, those, uh, you go to, they, there's a shape, uh, some kind, what's that called? Uh, um, it's a, 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 like a kick with some, uh, yeah, this is like a, Shape of a fish was lotus uh, inside the sweet stuff, right? And uh, it's in the shape of a fish, right? Mm-hmm. Or in something. Uh, they, there's a mole. This guy, this is like an iron mole. It's like he, those people are very serious. Like, yeah. And they cook it. And then, ah. it's like, it's a, like a ritual. We were watching it like, wow, why take it so serious? It's like only 100 yen per piece. He got guy who was serious. So he's like, if the mold is that shape, it will repeat me many, many times. How many kick that guy made a day? 200, 2,000? I don't know. Everything come out with that shape because the mold control the shape of the outcome of the shape of the kick, right? That's what John talked about. If the mold is incorrect, everything produced will be in that shape. If the early church didn't defend the truth of God, oh man, it's gonna be hor- horrible disaster. If John didn't correct and wrote John for chapter one, in the beginning was the word. The word was God and the word drowned among us. And Jesus was that, the word. He did, if he didn't clear, clarify that, Maybe the first century Christians will be very confused about Jesus' identity. Is he man or is he an angel? Or is he someone, a prophet? Uh, definitively, John proclaimed but through the revelation of God, Jesus is the Messiah and, the, and God himself. God's deity, Jesus' deity was clearly proclaimed in John's writing. Jesus is not... Secondary God, angels, as the Jehovah Witnesses today still has been teaching that. If you go to Jehovah Witness Church, they think Jesus is just an angel, not God. God is Jehovah. That's why they call them so Jehovah Witnesses. Jesus is not Jehovah. Jesus is not God. Jesus is a, some kind of secondary deity or even angels. Uh, so all the cult and wrong teachings surrounding us diminish Jesus' identity. Either washed down, was 
uh, water down the humanity of Jesus or water down the deity of Jesus. But the biblical truth, Jesus 100% human, except no sin. And Jesus 100% God, the Father, the, the, the Son of the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God is Jesus the Son. So Jesus 100% God, Jesus is 100% man. So we have to just understand that the unique revelation from the Bible. Uh, so we need to know the Bible. Otherwise, we can be, our thoughts can be altered by things around us. Uh, you better be careful. We better be careful. In the first century, there are false teachers. But today, there are many false teachers online, internet, uh, organized uh, so-called church. They are everywhere. Uh, if you don't know the Bible easily, you will be misled. That's why we, that's why going to church is important. Bible study is important. Devotion is important. So the Father sent the Son to save. So God, after the fall, well, actually the Bible said before the beginning of the creation, God already ordained Jesus to be to come here to save us. Um, so that's a mystery. But from human perspective, his historical perspective, Father sent the Son to be our Savior, to take away our sin, a Christmas story. Is the Lamb of God who take away the sin of the world. That's uh, John the Baptist proclaimed. This is the Lamb of God who take away the sin of the world. And that's Jesus' mission. And he, com he, com he completed it on the cross. He said, it is finished. Hallelujah. He, he paid for all our sin on the cross. And then three days later, resurrected. Those who accepted Jesus also accept the Father. In John 17, and the, when you read the book of John, there are many, many incidents of Jesus defending that. If you see me, you see the Father. Oh, the Jewish people said, what? <laughs> That's for me. Yeah? A, a man said, if you see me, you see the Father. You see Yahweh. You see Jehovah. Oh, no, 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 no. no. You get, don't say that. That's, that's too much. Uh, I, I, I am the... I am the bread, uh, eat me and you'll have life. It's like, what? <laughs> Drink my blood. It's like, uh, they didn't get it. But Jesus always present himself as representative from the Father. Father send me, I'm representing him. You trust me, you will go to the Father. I'm the way, the truth, the life. No one goes to the Father except through me, Jesus said. I am the one, the Messiah. I'm the son of God. God sent me here to redeem. So everyone accept the father, accept the son. That's for the Jewish people still today. They have to accept that. Uh, they, they accept Yahweh, but reject Jesus Christ. But Jesus said, you, you don't have the son, you don't have the father. If you have the father, you have the son. So they are one. You are in the, we are in Christ and we are in the Father and the Holy Spirit. And um, God loved the Son and we love, we are loved by the Son and also we are loved by the Father. So it's all connected. You cannot separate the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit. They, they are the try you and God. We have to accept it as a package. If you do not have the Son, you do not have everything. You don't have anything, or no, you don't know anything about God if you reject Jesus Christ because Jesus is the, uh, is a representative, the, the exclusive, official representative of God Himself. Uh, do you have the Sunday day? Even you go to church? Do you know Jesus as your Savior and Lord and walk with Him? Listen to his guidance. Seek his face every day. That's vital. That's most important. You know, uh, 
That's the foundation of faith. If you don't have that, anything you build on it will be shaky. Oh, you can become a Bible scholar. But if you don't know Christ as your Savior, all this knowledge will harm you instead of edifying you. You become a false teacher someday because you're not connected to the foundation. You're not built on the, the first and most important truth about Jesus. You didn't get it. And everything built on it will be shaky. So if you're already a Christian, oh, how much, what do you know about Jesus? Is your Jesus the product of imagination? Is something you generate in your mind without referring to the Bible to check? Know Jesus. That's the foremost important thing. Do you know him? For non-Christian, definitely. Do you know him? If you don't know him, you don't have life. The Bible proclaim and the wrath of God is with you. If you believe in Christ, God's blessing is flowing to you through him. Okay, let's move on. What happened? Okay, the second part of this chapter, actually the only chapter, 2 John verse 7. I say this because many deceivers who do not acknowledge Jesus as coming in the flesh. See, that's what he's defending. Jesus came in the flesh. That's what John is defending. Have gone out in the world. Many deceivers uh, who is teaching Jesus not in the flesh. Any such person is the deceiver and the antichrist. Very strong language. Watch out that you do not lose what you have worked for, but that you may be rewarded fully. That's rewarded in, in eternity. Anyone who runs ahead and does not continue in the teaching of Christ does not have God. Whoever continues in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not take them into your house or welcome them. Anyone who welcomes them share in their wicked work. I'm much to write to you, but I do not want to use paper and ink. Instead, I hope to visit you and talk with you face to face so that our joy may be complete. Children of your sister uh, who is chosen by God, send their greetings. So this is the conclusion of this book. So in line with 1 John, the Apostle John is continuing to remind the church. Maybe there's a different congregation, come different from the 1 John. We, it's not clear. But he restated that the theme of his teaching, Jesus, the word. Word become flesh before the foundation of the world, Jesus already exists because he created the heaven and the earth. He's God, but he God chose him to be, become a person. God become a person and born as a baby, grew up, learned the language to be limited so that he can demonstrate God's love for us because, because he fully represents human, the fallen human race. And also, he's perfectly holy and righteous. So his righteousness can be imputed to you and me. He's rich. We are poor, right? So Jesus joined account with us and put all his richness into my account. My, I'm, a, I'm a sinner, but Jesus is righteous. His blood covered my wickedness. Through him, we can be forgiven. And we can be right in front of God. We can be righteous in front of God. Not that you and me are righteous, but we have a joint account with Jesus when you believe in him and his righteousness is imputed to your account and your name. So beware of deceivers and antichrist. Antichrist means anti-Jesus. There's so many things anti-Jesus nowadays in the world, right? Everywhere. Uh, no, we're, we're not making it up. 
Uh, also, not just aware. Oh, I know those are cults. The protect the truth and God's church. What are you going to do if they are coming to your church and spread all this thing? That's what happened in John's congregation. That's why he wrote this. People original from their church was being misled and spread this false teaching among the existing church and misled a group of people and left the church. And that's why John is defending. Don't listen to this group of people. They deviate from what the apostle learned from Jesus Christ himself. That's why he said, in from the beginning. That's what he means. From the beginning, though, hey, I am the one, I'm eyewitnesses. I lived with Jesus for three years. I saw him resurrected. He charged me with all this truth, and I'm passing through this church, first generation church. If you guys don't hold on to this teaching from the beginning, you deviate to all this falsehood, and it will, it will be disastrous. If this pattern repeat, the second generation, the third generation, oh, who is Jesus will be, be totally lost. Lord Jesus, so, so protect the truth uh, and, and, God, and God's church. Uh, you may say, John, the, the, the apostle of love, now he's teaching something very strong. He said, anyone, verse 9, uh, anyone who run ahead and does not continue the teaching of Christ, does not have God. Don't join the Mormons. Don't join the Jehovah Witnesses. Don't join the uh, uh, all this cult. Whoever continues the teaching, the teaching from the beginning, Jesus' teaching, has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not take them into your house and welcome them. Anyone who welcomes them share in the wicked the wicked work. Okay, so that's why we need to understand this. The church is full of love. The church is full of God's truth. We need to balance it, right? But there are times you need to defend and protect the church and the believers, particularly if you're in the leadership position. Uh, Imagine uh, you have a, uh, someone ring your bell and uh, that guy is a serial killer, child molester. He ring your bell. Hey, Ben, open up the house. I want to visit you guys. I want to hang out with Leslie and Dider. What will Ben do if you know he is he has all this criminal background? You have to be careful, right? You have to protect your family. You have to protect your children, and you have to guard yourself from this danger. So that's what John is talking about. Special case. They are deviating Jesus' identity. We have to protect the congregation. We cannot let them come into the church of God to, pull, to, to spread all this virus among the, the, the brother and sister. They will be deceived because they are not mature enough to discern this, this teaching. So they are not mature enough. The parents have to protect them. So in this kind of incident, we need to take serious uh, uh, response, protect. We have to protect the the brother and sister, so that they will not spread the germs and the virus and the deception among the early church. If John didn't teach us, if the brother and sister didn't protect the church, maybe the whole generation would wipe out. The, the people got lost, being deceived. The ultimate force behind false teacher and deceiving teaching is Satan himself, right? Satan want to destroy you. If Jesus, if Satan can lie about Jesus, who Jesus is, he he got it, right? 
He won the battle. If if your what you believe is not biblical, it's not who Jesus is. If G Satan lie about who Jesus you, and you believe it, then you're in big trouble. So because our salvation is based on who Jesus is and true understanding of who He is, so Lord Jesus is the center of our faith. It's the center of our faith. As I said earlier, you can have. Your trust can ha cannot. Uh, there are few things you you can not afford without. Uh, you, some church have uh, a band. Uh, some church have fancy uh, decoration, a nice uh, air conditioning, uh, audio visual. Wow, super nice. Even drama team. I tell you what. The, Any religion can have that. You can go to any kind of religion. They can have PowerPoint, they can have music, they have nice facility. But where is Jesus? If you don't have Jesus in your church and your teaching and your life, all this uh, frivolous, no use. All this equipment, all this facility, A secondary. The, the early church have nothing. They have Jesus. They have the gospel. They have the Holy Spirit. They didn't even have the New Testament. This is not complete yet. It's still be in the process of writing. They have to hide themselves. They're persecuted. They're gathering the church. Shh, don't sing too loud. The early church was like that. Now the church has a lot of stuff. But I'm very sad there. A lot of time, Jesus was compromised. His teaching and his uh, our relationship with him is being pushed down by our needs. Oh, it's about me. It's about this consumerism. It's about me. How can I, what, I, what do I get out of this church? What do I learn? What, what do I, how do I make my life better? It's like a self-help book. A church is like a psychology thing. Help me to be a better person. Help me to be on time. Help me. Those are good, but if you don't have Jesus, you what's the difference between your church and the rest of the religion? Jesus Christ. The church is Jesus Christ's church. We find Jesus in his church. If you miss that point, you, you lost everything. Come to church and know Jesus and share Jesus. Know him, number one. And you trust him. Right, knowing or just had all oh, don't trust him, it's different. You know, I've become a Christian for many years since 1979. Recently, my I experienced uh, some uh, um, I, my experience in life uh, charged my faith. Uh, had knowledge I know about eternal life, salvation, uh, God's protecting me. I know that had knowledge, but when stuff happened, do you believe that? Do you trust God can protect you? Do you believe God can solve this problem in your life? It's so so troublesome. Do you believe He can do it? A few years later, uh, earlier, I I have a lot of confidence. Oh, I believe, I believe, because the, the trial has not arrived. But when the trial arrives. We challenge our faith being challenged, and that we are to grow. Up. We are to learn what God is teaching us every day. God allow hardship and trial in your life to make your faith stronger, to refine your understanding of who Jesus is, to purify your motive to come to God. Refining fire, burn all the the draws, make your faith pure in Jesus. Trust him, love him. Well, we love so many things, but sometimes Jesus is forgotten. We care about so many things in life, but seldom we think about loving Jesus. It's not emotionalism. The Bible said we should Lo loving God is to respond to God's love. You love God because God loves you so much, right? We, 
if we neglect that, no motivation to do anything spiritual. This world, the darker it is, the more we need to keep our love in Christ. If you don't love him, it's very difficult to survive in this uh, crooked and wicked generation. Serve him. Don't just uh, talk about loving God, knowing God, but put your love in action. In the New Testament church, the early church, people have to proclaim Jesus. Even if it's difficult. To love God, that means to serve him, to witness for him, to live for him. Um, you cannot just dissect this. You can, oh, I just love God on Sunday. I don't serve him. I don't care. This is, I serve myself. I serve my kingdom. I serve my business. I serve my family. Jesus says, seek ye first and his righteousness and his kingdom and his righteousness. All these things will be added unto you. Hopefully we glorify Christ in all we do. And um, John used three books to defend Jesus' identity. And you and me better know Jesus' identity clearly. We call Christology. Who is to you? Um, Colossians is a good book to study Jesus' identity. Uh, Philippians is a good book. He humbled himself to pour his life. Uh, but God will make him name above all names. Um, John, the gospel, definitely revealed the identity of Jesus. So, Beware of deceivers, antichrists. Protect the truth in God's church. Let Jesus be the center of your faith. Know him, trust him, love him, serve him, glorify him. We pray. Dear Lord, we just uh, pray that we know who you are clearly, without a doubt. And we might struggle. But Lord, you are the one who has chosen us before the foundation of the world. Continue, Lord, please, to reveal and to shine. Uh, give us a teachable heart so that we won't turn off our, eye, our ears and close our eyes when you speak to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Yeah, it's still record. Okay, uh, we are. Let's go to the communion. I want to read two passages to you. Hey, Leslie, can you read it for me out loud? Psalm one twenty one. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the Maker of heaven and earth. He will not let you let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed. He who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Amen. Where does my help come from? <laughs> Do you need help sometimes? We all need help from each other, everyone. So it's difficult to live by yourself or when you have no relatives, no, no one around you, right? It's hard. It's hard. Uh, but our ultimate help is God himself. And that takes trust to believe that. The maker of heaven and earth, the maker of heaven and earth, my help come from the Lord. And he promised he's watching over us. Praise God. Uh, the time I didn't run into a car accident, I, I, I think God kind of helped me out. <laughs> Even sometimes I'm callous, God protect me. I, there's no excuse for being callous, right? But somehow God be gracious to us, uh, giving us delivery and help us. And another passage you want to share? Joshua 1 9. 
Let's see one more time. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Uh, is it the book of Joshua? You know, Joshua was the, you know, uh, Moses died, right? Moses died. It was a gigantic commission by God to, to bring the Israelite out of Egypt to the promised land. It's just, it's just headaches, right? You read the Exodus. It's headache and trouble. And yes, a lot of miracles. But Joshua was like a psychic. He stand by Moses, like watch all these miracles. Like, whoa, yeah. Set the, apart the Red Sea and the, all the miracles. Well, Joshua is like bystanders, like, whoa, Joshua. I've, I've, I touched by this passage. I sometimes feel like I'm Joshua. Uh, oh, look at all the older pastor. They, they, they bear the, the fight, the, all the burdens. They've fought the battles. Uh, but our older pastors slowly deteriorate their health. Uh, they will be gone one day, right? One day. And the next generation is to step up and to continue God's work and fight a spiritual battle. So I sometimes feel intimidated and scared, uh, but God spoke comfort. God comforted Joshua. You don't need Moses. You need me. I command you, be strong. Don't be timid. Be courageous. Don't get discouraged. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. The Lord, your God, will be with you wherever you go. Because if you walk with God, obey his command, love him, serve him, he will be with you. He will be with you. Hang in there. Communion. I read it. For I received from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he was given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new confidence in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread, drink this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord's death until he comes. So then when whoever eat the bread and drink the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner, that you don't, that means you don't understand why you're taking this cup and why Jesus died for your sin. And we'll be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to, keyword here, to examine themselves before they eat the bread, drink from the cup. But those who eat and drink without discerning, the body of Christ eat and drink judgment on themselves. So, primary three reasons we observe the Lord's Supper. Jesus asked us. He established this so that we will remember his sacrifice for us. As we, as we said earlier, Jesus is the center of our faith. We, uh, our church did once a month. We come to, it's like a ritual, but there's a meaning behind a ritual. It's to remember Jesus and what he has done for us, to appreciate, to be thankful, and to also know our identity. And uh, another reason is that uh, to wait for his coming. Uh, every time we come to the Lord's table, we are reminded he died. He didn't just die, he respected, and he's risen to heaven and will come back. And every time we come to the Lord's table, we are waiting for his coming, second coming. And the third is to examine our life, whether we are living in God's way every day, the way we talk, the way we live, the way we see things, the way we treat people. Are we in line with the gospel and Jesus' teaching? If not, repent, ask God to reveal to us and change. Let him change us. Let's have some quiet time uh, before we before we uh, observe. Let's take a minute or two to pray on your own.
Let's pray. Our Lord, we just uh, praise you for the grace is sufficient. You have amazing grace. And uh, just because of your grace that we are safe. And Lord, we come into your presence and, and as you have asked us to remember you in this uh, ceremony. Lord, thank you for loving us while we are sinners rebellious, ignorant, foolish. Oh God, forgive us our sins. We're sorry, Lord. We always like that. Lord, never give up on us. Continue work in our hearts. Change us, mold us, wash us, heal us, help us, strengthen us. Thank you for your sacrifice for us. You love us more than anyone in this universe. So as we take the bread, drink the cup, remind us who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. So Jesus took the bread and said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's do this together. Without shedding of blood, sin cannot be forgiven. Bible proclaim. God said, you will surely die the day you eat this fruit. Someone has to die. Instead of the lamb, the New Testament, Jesus is the lamb, the lamb of God. And he shed his blood so that we can be forgiven. Our debts towards God is redeemed, is paid for. Let's remember Jesus' sacrifice on the cross for us. After the Lost Supper, the, the the apostles sang a song, sang a song, sang a hymn, and they went to the Mount of Olives. Uh, why don't we uh, close in prayer? Heavenly Father, we continue to pray for my brothers and sisters, strengthen them in this pandemic, protect them, and give them hope, give them um, nourishment, spiritual nourishment, so that don't, they don't feel dry and, dry and helpless. Strengthen your church, Lord Jesus. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Stop recording. Yes.